Hey, what is up, fellow age groupies? Welcome to another episode of the Age Groupies Podcast. I'm Mike Ergo, and along with my awesome co-host, Lindsay Hyken, we're here to talk to you about all things related to endurance sports from an amateur athlete perspective. We talk about how to have fun along the way and stop taking ourselves so seriously all the time. Y'all can follow the show on Instagram at Age Groupies. Join our Age Groupies page on Facebook and look us up by name, Lindsay Hyken and Mike Ergo on Strava. And if you have any questions, comments, or ideas for our show that you want to hear about, please email us at agegroupies at gmail.com. And if you enjoy the show, I'm asking you all, please take a couple minutes. Not even a couple minutes, maybe 30 seconds. Can you spare 30 seconds? I know I hate people who ask me that question, or I hate when people ask me that question, but I'm asking you now. If you enjoy the show, leave us a rating review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts including YouTube. We're on YouTube, guys. Check it out. Today's episode is one where Lindsay and I discuss the growth that comes from discomfort in a lot of ways and conversations we have with people who are different from us in the pool, on the bike, on the trails, how growth and discomfort are intertwined and linked. So I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get to the show. What is up? How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing okay. Better than last week. Not that anything yeah. has really changed that much from last week, actually. But, you know, there's some hope. And also, I just, you know, I I don't know. I've done some meditation. Just what I needed to do, some self-care. I'm a little bit... <clears throat> this morning's a little difficult because... <laughs> I ha- I haven't been running because I've been having knee problems again, which is, um, you know, based on me not uh, doing the strength stuff I need to do to do my knee, yeah, you know, runner's knee. But I thought, oh, I'll just go meet up with um, some people from my team. They were doing just a little short thing on Tuesday night, and I just wanted to see them. And I'm like, so I'll just run walk, which I did. It was like three miles of like jogging and walking, and now my knees hurt and my lower back hurts. I'm like, geez, uh, Louis, three months. Mi- like, I'm like, did I ever really, did I do that Iron Man? Cause I feel like I can't, you know what I mean? <laughs> I know that sentiment. I know that sentiment. That's how I felt last week. And when I went and jogged a mile and I was just, I was exhausted. I think from all just paying attention to the consciousness of the country and all the, the events, I, I've needed a lot of extra sleep. And I've been doing a lot less working out, a lot more sleeping. Yeah. You know, I think that that that's probably true. I do feel exhausted and I haven't been sleeping that well. You know, I've been getting as much as I need and waking up in the middle of the night. So that probably contributes. When I get stressed out, I do feel it in my lower back, too. So it could just be that, Mm. you know, I've got that that stress from kind of everything that's going on. And then the run kind of kicked it off. Because my knees, yeah. my knees are sore, but they're not. The, that wouldn't really be a big deal. But my lower back is now hurting, which yeah, you know, makes it hard. But that said, it doesn't really hurt. Like on the bike, um, I did hill repeats last night, and I was fine on the bike. And last Friday, before the before I did this little jog, um, I did a seventy two mile ride up in the North Bay. Um, I saw, I saw that. That looked like a fun one. Have you done that route? Get up near near Tamales. Tom- mm-hmm. No, I haven't done that. Yeah, yeah, near yeah, we went through um uh, uh, Point Race Station. We rode from like um San Rafael up by um around the reservoir and uh there's a, a climb there called Marshall Wall. You should check I you could probably get the route from right from my Strava. Yeah, oh yeah, it's right there. It look it's a beautiful area. I've driven it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be that's a good route cuz it's got some good climbing about that was about 40 72 and a half miles, 44 4500 feet of climbing. Um, but headwind for about two thirds of the way. <laughs> I saw that in your, post. we're like, how did we come around the top of the loop and still have a headwind? Like, you know, <laughs> we're like literally facing the yes. other direction, but it's because you come up and then you drop down on one. And anyway, it was, it was beautiful, but big headwind. So the, so what's working for me right now is cycling, running, not so much. I do need to get my crap together and 
do my strength workouts and I've, I'm acknowledging that, but until I do, I'm going to let the run go and just focus on Cause my writing's going really well right now and I'm enjoying it. Um, and it looks like Great. swim's starting to going to be coming back because swimming pools are kind of opening. I mean, one person at a time and you've got to book it way out in advance, but I'll you be able, can't wait. yeah. Oh my gosh. Ours open today. Our team pool. Yay. But of course it's like booked up immediately. <laughs> like, people yeah exactly <laughs> it's like some it's like i remember back in the day waiting in line for like Ticketmaster to get concert tickets you know <laughs> what i mean back before the internet it's like you go and there's this massive line you're just like waiting or even now like waiting on online to like you know get hamilton tickets it's the same thing it was like people were just yeah. like as soon as, as soon as it is 10 a.m click <laughs> as soon as that thing opened up it was like brrrah. people just like went crazy but i'm excited to get back in the pool so so how are you doing I have had a lot of discomfort, a lot of, I think a lot of growth, and that's what we wanted to talk about today. The growth that comes from discomfort, whether that be through athletic training, through intellect and, and discussion and learning, and just what happens when we put ourselves beyond what we're used to and into unfamiliar territory and the results. But I've been watching a lot of documentaries and movies, reading a lot of books, trying to understand as best as I can from an outside perspective what it's like not to be white in the United States of America and the history of that. Yeah, that really is probably one of the fundamental challenges with this issue is that if you are white, even if you are an empathetic, compassionate, caring individual, it's virtually impossible for you to understand what it's like to not be white. And mm -hmm. it's through no fault of your own, but it's like, you're not, you know what I mean? Like, that's just a fact, right? You, you yeah. white yeah. guy in America, I mean, you can, you can close your eyes to that fact and go about your business, which is what a lot of people do. And that's why I think the problem continues to exist. You can do what you're doing, which is educate yourself and, and try, you know, to get yourself at least as close as possible to that understanding. But like you said, there's like mm -hmm. discomfort there and there's work there. And for a lot of people, it's just too much work. Do you know what I mean? Like, and that's it's too much work. Mm -hmm. It's too, it's too much work, and, and there's something about our our defensive mechanisms that pop up when when things are uncomfortable or don't feel familiar. It's like, I'm not used to this. I don't like it. And it hits the part of our brain, our limbic system, before we have a conscious thought. And so it takes some slowing down. It takes some, some intention to say, I'm going to allow some discomfort to be here. You know, like in, in a very similar way, and maybe the same way as like, when you have a, a, a tough swim interval or a bike sprint that you know you're going to do and you know it, it's going to really tax your body and feel very uncomfortable. Yeah. But you have to, decide, you have to decide, beforehand. decide beforehand. Right. Because I think, I mean, one of the things that's, I mean, at the end of the day, we're animals, right? And the, and discomfort from like a, just a base perspective is like an indication that something, you know, there's danger or we need to be on alert yeah. or you know what I mean? And it's very primal. Right. And so, but I mean, the way that humans have developed and all of the tools that we've created in the, in the society that we've made makes it so that a lot of our discomfort at this point, isn't really indicating an actual threat to our well being. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. we're going to get a situation right. where a bear is chasing us down. Right. Exactly. Like, or, you know, our shelter is not going to be actually taken away or we're not, you know, we're going to be able to still feed ourselves. Right. But, but yeah. we have these instincts. And, um, so that, that practice of, of facing discomfort is really good for us because it, it allows us to grow that muscle that would be able to parse out like, Oh, a bear's chasing me time to get the F out of here or play dead or whatever we're going to do versus, you know, it makes me uncomfortable to have a conversation about race or I I'm uncomfortable on this 
this ride because I'm pushing myself. I mean, if you don't practice that, then there's just this knee jerk reaction of like to move away from discomfort. Mm-hmm. All and discomfort. Think, yeah. So, so if we, if we, if we base it, if we take that as a given that there's a knee jerk reaction. I, I think that we can look at our knee jerk reaction and say, okay, it's going to be there. So, um, I don't judge people when they have that knee jerk reaction, but then I say, okay, given that you're probably going to have it because it hits a part of your brain that's not your in- intellectual, logical thinking brain, what do you do after? What do you do? You have that knee jerk reaction. Like when you get in a cold pool, it's like, <gasps> okay, uh, I'm going to stay here. Right. <laughs> and I think that that for a lot of African Americans is really the point of frustration is. Yeah. We understand there, I mean, there's so much history in this country. There has been such a movement over time, you know, so many stereotypes and propaganda put out there that, you know, we are innately, uh, you know, dangerous and violent and lazy and whatever, all the stuff. Right. So Mm -hmm. when someone has that knee jerk reaction, it's like, okay, I mean, I get it. You're sort of brainwashed to the fact that, you know, and you can't see me for me. But the part I think that is so frustrating is all the after word, like you're talking about. There's so many people who have the knee jerk reaction. And then instead of doing what you're doing and acknowledging, like maybe my knee jerk reaction isn't really appropriate or necessary, they kind of double down on it. You know what I mean? <laughs> With, yeah, yeah. And that's where the frustration, I think, for it's like at this point, we have a lot of data about institutional racism institutions aren't knee-jerk reactions. They are systematic implementation of laws and policy that... So you had a lot of time to think about that before you put that in place, you know what I mean? Yes. (laughs) And that's where it's like, "Mm, you're not just afraid of this one black guy walking down the street. You are trying to skew... um, things in favor of one particular race group. And that's, I think what we're seeing now is people are saying, no, no, it's not just, it's not just that person that has that innate fear, which is frustrating. I mean, I'll, I'll admit I've been frustrated when I've seen people who have crossed the street from me in fear. And I'm like, really me? You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) yeah, I mean, Wow, if if I'm scaring you, I don't know how you are in the world. You know I mean? They're like, they're afraid of a good hug. It's like don't go. Yeah, you better not travel anywhere because you're going to be real. You know, um, yeah. But you know, there's it's like there's that. But now we're having the conversation of of um, all the other stuff that comes from like just this systematic implementation of policy and and um, and it's good because we're seeing. I mean, I don't know how much is going to come out of it, but we are seeing people put in thought, like you're saying after the fact, like, okay, well, that was my initial reaction, but let me, let me think about this and maybe put some, some policy in place that will help mitigate some of that knee jerk reaction. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I will never pretend to understand what it's like to be black in America. The closest analogy I can draw is my own experience as a veteran and the preconceived notions people have as someone who came back from war and there's, there's a few stereotypes out there of, you know, the, the veteran as the cold blooded killer, the ticking time bomb, who's going to snap or the hero or the person who's completely broken and can't do anything. You know, none of those stereotypes are helpful, but I mean, even from own fa- my own family members, I remember getting home and having, uh, you know, I'm, I have loved cats even before I love dogs. So I'm a big animal person. And I was going to sleep. I was living with my parents, going to sleep. And my mom was worried that because the cat was in my room, she said, well, what if you wake up in the middle of the night and think that's the enemy and kill the cat? And I, <laughs> You're like, actually, I'm suffering from PTSD. I need the lo- the unconditional love of this cat, but thanks. <laughs> yeah, or just, you know, when people hear that I've been to war and my job there, my experience, you just the ideas of, am I a dangerous person or that I enjoy killing people or that I, whatever they, whatever they think that's, so that's the only analogy I can draw. Well, I can think of something else that's similar 
that veterans over a history have experienced, um, which is there will be some sort of like outrage over the treatment of veterans. And then there will be a, um, uh, I would say like a symbolic effort, you know what I mean? Where people are like, yeah. Oh, you know, so, okay, let's, let's all, um, clap for veterans at every single sporting event, but let's not actually fund the, yeah. the VA in a way that will help these veterans recover from all of the stuff that they've seen. It's that kind of, that's it's, good, it's point. that same thing of like, well, if you see it and you know, it's an issue and you care, like you say, you're caring, why is there not really any like solid action? You know, I remember hearing, years ago, um, about all of these guys like fighting that were over, you know, being sent over like yourself, but, but we're being, you know, I guess maybe infantry guys. And I mean, I know nothing about the, the military, but they were like low ranking, um, guys that it, and, you know, from a lot of them were from poorer backgrounds and that they were being paid so little that like their spouses and whatever were also on welfare. And, yeah. I, I mean, I'm a super liberal, progressive, anti-war person, but I'm not anti-veteran or anti, I mean, I'm just like, I would prefer us to have policies where we don't get involved in wars and some people have to die, but I don't hold right. the actual individual people in the military. I mean, plus we do need some of that. Right. And I'm, I'm so grateful. It's not me doing it, but, but I was appalled by that because I'm, you know, it's like, wait a minute on the one hand we're supposed to be like, you have to be pro military if you want to be a patriot, but we're not even paying these really, people yeah. enough to feed their own <laughs> children. What are we doing? What is that? And that's the same kind of stuff we see in African American, like in our, with our struggle, it's like, we'll, we'll see symbolic efforts that don't net, you know, actual positive results for us that are hurting. And so, you know, token gestures, like thoughts and prayers. We send our thoughts and prayers like oh, to all of the if, families at blah, blah, blah. But, you know, we're if I hear that one more time. I almost want to like, fuck your thoughts. And right. Prayers. No, exactly. It's like it's it's hollow and meaningless. And um, the good thing about what's happening right now is we're seeing people come and say come out and say that kind of that's no longer good enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I I, I believe and I hope that it it won't just be for like black lives. I obviously black lives matter important to me, but for other groups that find themselves, you know, in a similar situation, whether it's women, military, other race, you know, race, whatever it is, it's like, we will we, like, let's stop the hollow, just the thoughts and quote unquote thoughts and prayers. And let's yeah, take yeah. actual meaningful action. Right. right. Take, take the thoughts prayers. and prayers and build on those to make policy and, and tangible change in the world. There's, I think what uh, there, there can be a healthy dose of giving the benefit of the doubt to those populations who are experiencing and, and, and listening, you know, here's what I understand about my own experience and all this is I think the last thing I'll say about me and being a veteran, but, uh, I understand that nobody can understand what it's like to go to war unless they've been there. And that helps me understand that I can't understand what it's like to be black. Right. Yeah. You know, I don't, you know, so I'm going to give someone the benefit of the doubt, just like I hope they would give me the benefit of the doubt and, and listen, if that's something that we need to talk about. Mm -hmm. No, that's a good point. And that's, that's definitely, I would say that's sort of my experience in the reverse. It's like, I have no idea what it would be like to be over there in, in urban combat. Like I, can't even fa I can't I literally cannot fathom it but I do understand you know the reverse I understand what it's like to be black and that other people can't understand that and so yeah just a little benefit of the doubt would go a long way <laughs> Wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah and then just just starting with the fact that I might not know something so what if I listen first we're always going to make a judgment that's what we do that's what our brains are for to make judgments but what if we expand the data that we get by listening and doing a little more observation before we make our conclusions and act. I mean, I'm down for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll talk about discomfort. One thing we, 
we experienced last week was the discomfort maybe of, of people in our own triathlon community through this conversation. Yeah. What was that? Can I ask you what was that like for you when you noticed that after we posted in Pathetic Triathletes group that our post got taken down of our last episode? Yeah. When they've let other episodes stand. So Yeah. yeah. So it, it, it was something so the backstory for people who don't know was I posted our episode, which was entitled Why We Say Black Lives Matter. And we posted in Pathetic Triathletes Group, which if you're not familiar with it, it's a very large community of triathletes. And it's a lighthearted, sometimes joking about how we take ourselves too seriously. So very much in line with our podcast. And posting that episode, I got a message. Your post has been taken down by an admin. And I got the message that says, hey, I support BLM, but we want to stay clear from politics. So your post has been deleted. Mm -hmm. Well, at first I was like, um, equality for all human beings is not a political issue. It should not be a political issue. I mean, are there two sides to that issue? Uh, right. Equality. What are the two sides? Equality, not equality? How is that a political issue? It, sh it shouldn't be, even if you are a conservative you know, fiscally conservative person, or you have family values, or, you know, you're yeah. w very religious, what, whatever thing makes you think that you are conservative politically, how is equality not part of that? Even, even uh, conservative people like Sean Hannity, and like the evangelicals like Pat Robertson, condemned these things. So it's not, it's not like this is just a leftist issue. And it's a, it's something on like someone's platform. I mean, so, yeah. So I was, was kind was, of disappointed. Cause I mean, I, I feel uh -huh. like I was like, Oh, you know, I want I, as a, as a African American in triathlon, I want to see, um, my community support I me. And I want to see all these great people that I know are part of the triathlon community, you know, um, embrace i'm not asking triathletes to you know pour out into the streets and pro i'm just saying at least just embrace the fact that you know it, it's a good thing to want e equality you know and so it was disappointing yeah. to see but what was heartening was to see all the people's response that gave them crap for taking it down i was i mean that was that's that's great wasn't that cool yeah yeah we had that was probably the most engagement i've ever had in a post on facebook when I put that in there, I said, you know, I, I was hoping for better. And I put the picture of, of the, the admins message where we got our post in triath uh, pathetic triathletes deleted. And so many people were like, you know, WTF, what is this? What is this group about? And then people who were familiar with the group said, why would they do that? That makes no sense. And we had a bunch of people repost it and say, thank you to Lindsay and Mike for putting this up. I really like this episode and it's an important issue. And, they got theirs taken. There's, there's still one floating out there. <laughs> there's still one floating out there. And, but there was a bunch that got posted and deleted. Great. Uh, I mean, Hey, you know, it's, it's their page. They're, they're allowed to delete whatever they want, but I would say to them, you know, I get that you don't want po politics on your, um, on your page, but I would challenge you as the admins of pathetic triathletes to reconsider whether or not e equality for all humans is actually a political issue or not. I mean, even, even Iron Man has acknowledged that it's worth the, it's, it's good for the sport to yeah. make an effort to bring other, you know, more diversity into the sport. I mean, so so why this page can't see that too is kind of beyond me. And and speaking of which, you know, I, I'm sure most people who are listening to this already know, but Iron Man is is um, going to be um, releasing a new initiative, you know, through Iron Man Foundation called <clears throat> Race for Change, and that's about bringing, um, you know, diversity into the sport of triathlon. And and they've acknowledged that less than one percent of triathletes racing Iron Man um, are black. And I can attest to the fact that that is true. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, uh, and that, I can attest to it as well. <laughs> just noticing every time I see a, you know, a black person on the course being like, 
whoa. Awesome. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) Like literally at the swim start, I'm in a literal sea of white faces, right? And I don't feel particularly in talking about discomfort, you know, it's like I, I, I am mixed race and I grew up in a mostly white environment. So I'm, I'm so used to it now that I, I don't feel discomfort that I I can acknowledge at least consciously. But when I see another black athlete on the course, I'm like, (gasps) you know what I mean? It's like seeing a unicorn. It's like, Oh my God, I'm not alone. And so I guess there is a certain level of discomfort. I just don't really know, you know, acknowledge it. Um, consciously and that happened at iron man santa rosa you know it's like on the race course on the run i saw a black guy and we were just like what up you know? yeah. <laughs> we were both in the back and both struggling and it was like yep <laughs> you know I was, I was cracking up some friends over there because this guy and i were both like you know we have fast twitch muscles we're really meant for sprinting this whole like <laughs> long 15 hour day is kind of a white thing, but, <laughs> but we're doing it. <laughs> it was just, I mean, it was awesome. So, I love that. you know, I, 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 there's also, you know, I'm on, um, women for try. I'm a women for try ambassador. And I had the funniest thing happen. I, I guess for some reason, so I'm, uh, so there's two Facebook pages for women for try. There's the women for try page, which is for everybody. And then there's women for try ambassadors page, which is for those of us who are ambassadors this year, which is a weird thing because there's not really races happening. So we're kind of ambassadors, yeah. but anyway, um, on the ambassador page, I saw a few posts saying like, I just can't with the women for try right now that like, apparently it was popping off last week with like posts i guess for and against black Lives not against black lives matter but like you know we shouldn't be posting about it you, yeah or yes or you know we shouldn't be posting about this or we should or what, back and forth or you know what's the message coming from iron man before they release that thing about the um race for change initiative and i realized somehow i got i'm no longer on that page like i I was originally a part of that page, but I only see the ambassador stuff. So I missed all of the back and forth. <laughs> on the, yeah. And I kind of like, so I put some on the ambassador page. I should have like, maybe that's like the universe doing me a solid. Like, so I didn't have to be angry at a bunch of ignorant ass triathletes <laughs> saying like, all lives matter. Or we oh only God, need yeah. to talk about triathlon or whatever they're saying. Like, I just, um, I missed it. And I was like, right. oh, hey, whatever. <laughs> I'm all good with that. That's the thing that, that I don't know if we talked about. We might have talked about. Uh, yeah, we did a little bit. The You know, Black Lives Matter. And then the, the responses why things like All Lives Matter is not a, a great thing to say. The same. I saw another analogy that said, you know, when. Um, the Twin Towers fell, mm-hmm. you know a bunch of people were saying we stand with New York. We're all, we're all New Yorkers today. And then even when the Boston marathon got bombed, you know, everybody was okay with people saying Boston strong instead of replying, well, all cities are strong. Or, right. Right. Yeah. No city wants to get bombed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But, yeah. but right. That's such a good, that's a great analogy because we do. I mean, and, so I just heard this morning, this is, this is the kind of thing that makes me want to just bury my head in the sand. I heard this morning that Amazon is trying to suspend, um, the use of their, uh, facial recognition software because it's being used by police forces. And it turns out it can't recognize, um, all types of people as well. So it doesn't recognize women as well as men but it doesn't recognize dark skin. It can't tell the difference between dark skin people as well either. Mm. So basically the only people that can get recognized easily and correctly are white males. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So Shocker. <laughs> and it's like, they know that this is the case and Amazon apparently has been defending their you know software till now, but it's like, why, why would you defend that? It doesn't work. If it only recognizes consistently white males that's not software that works and the fact that it's out there and police forces are like yeah let's use it that's the kind of thing like it does make me feel uncomfortable 
and afraid because if they can't recognize my black face from some other black face or my female face from some other female face that they're looking for as a, you know, a felon or whatever, like if they take action based on that, what's going to happen? And, and I guess one of the things that's coming out about this time that's good is like, so Amazon's pulling their stuff, which is great. But more and more things keep seeping out that let us know, like, how, like, it's even deeper than I thought, you know what I mean? <laughs> as a, as an African American, mm, it's like, interesting. oh, there's even more shit. Like they're using facial recognition software. They know doesn't recognize dark skin very well. Like, oh, oh, I, yeah. I, I mean, how are, I don't know. I mean, I just feel like, how are we going to move forward when there's just, it's like every little thing that we look at has this glaze of bias over it right now that's that's um what's making me feel particularly uneasy right now today yeah well the rate that 2020 is going oh my god if we do have an alien invasion i think that might unite all of us i know we need one of those like um what was that one with uh independence day we need like an independence yes, exactly. day where bill pullman's gonna like bring us all together <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And they have that slow, like, <laughs> wide pan shot of everyone just looking at each other, nodding, and be like, we're going to fuck these aliens up. That's right. We're going to fuck those aliens up. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's that's um, that's so true. <laughs> Let, c- bring it on, aliens. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I'd say we're we're ready. I've even seen the memes where they show an alien talking to another one and be like, I think we're I think we're up next. Fuck, I'm nervous. <laughs> Although I have to say, if they actually make it here, we're so screwed because <laughs> we've only made it like to the moon. <laughs> you know what I mean? If they've made it here from some other like galaxy, it's like, oh, hmm. <laughs> True. <laughs> well, we'll figure out a way. Yeah, racial equality and good old love will conquer the <laughs> will conquer all. <laughs> and, yeah. Will <laughs> and Will Smith. And Will Smith. You always need Will Smith. <laughs> Or I guess now there's like new Will Smith's old. Who's the new like dude? Michael B. Jordan or one of those <laughs> newer. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't Well, we got Jason Momoa. Yeah. Man, right? He'll be in the mix. And The Rock. <laughs> oh, The Rock. Yeah. I think the, the Rock will be solid. Solid cultural reference until he's like 80. Right. Oh, my gosh. All right. So on a lighter note, because I don't I want to I don't want to end on more. um you know, racial strife since we aren't actually a, <laughs> a, a political slash equality slash podcast. Um, you know, I will say, and I was thinking about this the other day, I've learned a lot from doing triathlon about, about exactly what you're talking about at the top of the show about like facing discomfort and being like, Oh, this is super uncomfortable and it's okay. And I'm just going to keep doing it. And then eventually it will be not, it'll be fine. It'll either end or it'll be, you know, it'll be comfortable or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'll adapt. Um, And that's, you know, I've had that, you know, we've talked about this before, like starting swim, going to masters for the first time where you're like, this is so awkward. Like these people know what they're doing and I can, um, but I've been able to use that in other, um, like facets of my life, like what I've learned in triathlon, I've been able to use, you know, in other areas of my life where, um, the discomfort isn't stemming from like a physical thing, but it's, it's like, well, I was afraid when I did this Ironman, but I did it and it was okay. So I can therefore do this other thing. I can do this yes. talk at work or I can do, you know, and it'll be okay. And like an elevated heart rate doesn't mean I have to like fight or flight necessarily. Right. That, I like that. I, in as my job as a therapist, it's exactly what I do with people almost all day is help them face discomfort and say, okay, what can I do instead of waiting for the feeling to go away to take an action? Can I take an action despite the feeling Mm -hmm. take an action that's in line with my values? You know, we, we see this with all kinds of, uh, helping groups, you know, Mm -hmm. Uh, AA or the recovery groups, okay, just because I, f- I feel uncomfortable, can I do something other than take a drink, which I have learned is not good for me, right. you know, <laughs> for those who who have an allergy to alcohol. Yes. For those so, who've listened before, know Mike and I both are highly allergic. 
<laughs> I, I'm I am more allergic to alcohol than I am allergic to the sun. Which is I'm saying a lot. To the sun. Yeah. <laughs> I sneeze every time I go outside. <laughs> I see the sun. You know, um, that's true. And I was just thinking in in um, the program, you know, twelve steps. I've learned uh, a saying which I have to you know remind myself a lot, which is um, feelings aren't facts. And so just because I feel a certain way doesn't mean that that's the reality of the situation, that that's a factual thing. Like, <clears throat> and that can help when I'm feeling that knee jerk reaction to what someone else is doing. It's like feelings are not facts. Just because I feel angry at that person doesn't mean that they're a piece of shit it necessarily. I mean, they might be, but they also mm -hmm. might have like a reason why, or maybe they just are ignorant to something. And I think, you know, coming at anything from that perspective, coming at, you know, right now my struggle with triathlon is, is the aging thing. And like, it's been like a year and a half now I've been talking about, you know, knees aren't cooperating and then they're cooperating, but then the low tendon hurts and the Achilles tendon, or like, you know what I mean? It's like this moving target and that's aging. And, and I don't want to age, you know what I mean? I want to stay young with, with well lubricated joints that just allow me to go do yes. whatever I want, whenever I want. And that's not the case anymore. And so, but that can leave me feeling like I can feel afraid even like, oh my gosh, am I ever going to be able to run trails again? What's going to happen? You know, it's like, <clears throat> maybe I can, maybe I can't, but just because I feel afraid doesn't mean I'm not going to have a good life or I'm not going to enjoy life or that I'm going to weigh a thousand pounds. That's a great point. It's like, do something else. You know what I mean? Like there's other ways to get, it's like, well, I'll try writing and oh, look, writing's working for me right now. And so I can write, you know, it's just that acknowledgement that what I feel doesn't necessarily, um, isn't necessarily reality. And I don't have to let it inform my behavior. Can you imagine what it would be like if you verbalized those thoughts you had about people? Hey, you might not be a piece of shit, but I'm just really angry right, right. now. Right. Oh, I know. <laughs> But you might be a piece of shit. I'm not sure yet. But I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna pause and wait for you to have a discussion with me so that I can determine whether or not you're a piece of shit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's not what we do as humans. We immediately, it's like I'm gonna put you in the piece of crap bucket and then I'm done. Right. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Cancel. You are done forever. You've been banished. You've done something to offend me. Right. Whether or not that offense was real or directed at me or even happened in the first place. Yeah. I mean, I would have never <clears throat> thought, hey, you're going to have a podcast with like a former Marine dude like that. And it's going to be fine. I I never would have thought yeah. that. <laughs> not that I had anything against Marine, but it's like I didn't think we were even in the same. You know what I mean? Like there's nothing. Right. What would we talk about and have in common? Right. I mean, that's at the end of the day, it's like with the more we talk, the more it's like, well, we're just people. Yeah. You know, and um, we kind of keep learning the same. We keep we've learned the same lessons, but for different reasons, like you're like we were just talking about earlier about the veteran versus the black thing. It's like we've both had experiences that other people haven't had that can't relate to us that were very that changed the way we view the world. But in a similar way, like our, the end result was a similar view of the world in terms of like, maybe I don't know everything. Maybe this person's going through, but from a different, you know, for different reasons. And that's pretty, it's like, it's amazing to see, you know. Yeah, that's something that uh, Victor Frankl, who I reference a lot, mentioned. And you know, I, I'll even pull it up. I, I have a quote of his. He said, between stimulus and response, there is a space. And that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. And for those of you who don't know, Viktor Frankl wrote the book, Man's Search for Meaning. And he survived Auschwitz, the concentration camp, and went on to realize that as humans, our primary driver, what, what moves us is not the pursuit of pleasure, but the pursuit of meaning. And he, he realized early on in his journey there and, and as he went to, on to become a psychologist that finding purpose involves discomfort and it involves things that are unknown and scary. And so that's not necessarily bad. In fact, a lot of times it's good. Yeah. And that's, that's amazing. And I absolutely agree. And I love that quote. And I think, 
even just tying it back into terms of kind of into terms of triathlon and what's going on now with the the shelter in place and coronavirus and everything is um, if you have a purpose for racing, you know, if you have a a really strong why that's outside of uh, yourself or just, you know, um, like I want to win everything, you know, I, I feel like those of us who have a why are finding it easier to navigate the shelter in place and the cancellation of all of our races because the race isn't the end game. You know what I mean? And so, okay, well, I, I mean, yes, we love to do it. Don't get me wrong. I mean, of course. And I want to go to Kona and watch Mike race and for, you know, for a gold star family, I'm not saying, that, but like, but that's not the end game is not just the race. And so you can find other ways to still, engage with your why if you have one (laughs) and for triathletes who don't have any why other than just like i want to go and be there and do go as fast as i can and that's it and i don't have any other motivation behind it right now they're sol because everything's canceled and they feel canceled and pools are closed and so it's most people are losing fitness Mm -hmm. you know if if we're going to bring that up most people are losing fitness right now or not they're not gaining as much as they would where things open. And that's just, some people might be, but man, they're few and far between, man. <laughs> yeah. Few and far between. And you're right. That's applied to me too. Cause I've, I've lost a lot of fitness mm-hmm. and I'm not as lean as I'd like to be. But when I come back to my why I say, okay, it doesn't matter as much because I know my why involves healing for myself and just as importantly healing for other people that I'm racing for. So that's still going to take place whether I'm 10 pounds heavier, 20 pounds heavier or not. Right. As long as I can get my ass across that finish line. And Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so, and I'm going to participate in the upcoming, you know, initiative race for change. And, um, yes, yes I'm so excited. I mean, you know, being able to be a, um, hopefully, you know, encourage other black athletes to come into the sport and really reap all the benefits that I've reaped, um, from participating in triathlon in this community is going to be like an amazing, and that's an amazing why. And so whenever it happens and whenever we open back up and the initiatives in full swing, it's like, that's more important to me than that. Well, we all know I don't really give a crap about my time. I mean, I look at people faster time than go, Oh, that'd be cool. But I (laughs) ain't really going to do it. So whatever, but it's like, yeah, I just want to get across the finish line and inspire some people and inspire my kids and, you know, do maintain my own health, you know, for, so, you know, it's, so it's okay. Um, anyway, I love it. Yeah. I'm, I'm so excited for you. I told you offline uh, outside of the podcast that I'm, I'm so excited for you to be part of race for change Yay! and, to see what comes of it. I mean, it, it just came on the scene last week. I think like the day, uh, maybe the day after we recorded our last podcast, it all just got announced and mm-hmm. became our, the new thing that was brought into the consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. I will, I will say one quick thing that was funny. Um, on the, <clears throat> the women for try ambassador, uh, they gave Iron Man some feedback because Iron Man had posted up, you know, if you want to do a race for change and you want to be part of the initiative, you can fill out here in the form. And they had a, had a picture. And initially the picture was white, all white people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they were Is like, race for change or race for change. You might want to get a different color in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I imagine like the, like the panic on the, the webmaster's face and like, okay, all we need is, is a photo of a black person doing track. Can't find one. <laughs> like, oh shit, where? <laughs> Iron Man, you can hit me up <clears throat> or just go through your own photo gallery way towards the end of the day and you'll find one. <laughs> yeah, just use Amazon software and, and find the ones it doesn't recognize. hundred percent. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Should we end on that note? <laughs> I think so. That's good. All right, all you dongles. Yes. We'll uh, check back with you. Oh, we do. Did we announce that last week? I don't think we did. That was, that? <clears throat> we have an official name for, 
<laughs> so Reese, one of our uh, listeners, super fan, super fan, referred to himself as a dongle last week on our page, and I thought that was brilliant. So we have officially named all of our listeners dongle. And if you don't know why, go back in the archives and listen to our episode on dongles. Dongles and afros, right? Yep, dongles and afros. <laughs> All right, y'all. We'll see you next week. Take care. All righty. That concludes today's episode of the Age Groupies podcast with me, Lindsay Hyken, and my co-host, Mike Ergo. We really hope you enjoyed it. You can follow the show on Instagram at Age Groupies, join our Age Groupies page on Facebook, and look us up by name, Lindsay Hyken and Mike Ergo on Strava. If you have questions, comments, or topic ideas, feel free to email us at agegroupies at gmail.com. If you enjoy the show, please leave a rating and review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts, as this really helps us get more exposure while we try to grow this little venture. And of course, if you have friends you think might like the show, please be sure to share it with them. But for now, thanks for listening, and we will talk to you next week.